Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road here with a view from Davos. Actually, I should say the 6.5 is on the move. Because we are moving here. We're, we're moving. walking and talking we're and we're heading down the promenade. Yeah. Uh, Osa, it's so good to have you back. Last year we stood in the snow. Yes. It was 6.5 in the snow. Um, and we talked a little bit about what was going on in Davos. This year, you and I have had a few chances to get together. You sat on a panel with me mm -hmm. uh, at Kearney where we talked about this new CEO research. Thank you so much for that. And then I moderated a panel for you. Thank so now you we're all so even, much. now I owe you one because now you're coming back and helping me. <laughs> um, look, uh, as we walk and talk here down the promenade, one of the things I want to ask executives like you, you know, where you're leading Ericsson, is when you come to Davos, like, what is the big sort of goal, you know? You see some of these firms have big houses, they're yeah. making huge investments. And I think Ericsson has a big presence, big uh, delegates, uh, a number of delegates, but uh, not on the promenade necessarily. Like, what do you kind of come here? What do you hope to achieve in the five days you're here? Well, uh, we're, we're a relatively small delegation from, from Ericsson, and we have a very small, very thin back office. We're basically just the hero of us with a clear purpose, our CEO, our CTO, of her, uh, we're head of government and political affairs, our head of sustainability, our head of Europe and Latin America, and myself who runs the enterprise world solutions business. All right. So I, I think overall, I mean, one is to drive the awareness and influence uh, understanding of how important investments in the network infrastructure is critical, yeah. not only for companies, but also for industries and at the, you could say at the core of it, nation's competitiveness. So that's one part, right? Well, another part, there are a lot of tech firms here, so the prominent full. So we have a lot of partners that we take the opportunity to meet while we're here together. Yeah. Uh, on my like at Qualcomm last night. Like Qualcomm last yeah, night. We had a, had a yeah. nice evening. No, it, 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 it's nice, and I think it's a great opportunity to actually spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time um, while we're all here. Uh, but there are also uh, sustainability. I think yep. it's a topic we have uh, not talked seen as much this year. Yeah. But we, I think the planet hasn't changed. We still have to move <laughs> that topic. So we, we still believe in energy efficiency. We do believe we need to be mindful of our resources, whether that's you know, energy capacity, yep. if that's other type of resources. So that's one. And for me, you know, being a, a traditional in, in the heart, we're at, telecom industry and yeah, telecom yeah, company, yeah. here you have a much broader industry. And for us, networks of the future are here to not only provide, you know, our cell phones with connectivity, but all important enterprise and industry applications. So personally, I spend a lot of time meeting uh, companies in different sectors to understand both drive awareness but also how we can work closer together to connect the factories to warehouses to solve problems where they don't have connectivity at the edge but also make them aware about what what c competence capabilities we have yep and build relationships absolutely yeah no I mean great I, I, it was like a chance and stance meeting last year and and now we've been able to build a, a rapport over a year and spend more time together and learning mm -hmm. a lot about what you're doing it's great um, you know, you mentioned something that I think has kind of been sidelined, and I think with the new administration in the U.S. and knowing the world tends to follow the lead in the U.S. in many things. There's mm -hmm. some things we do that are not always appreciated, and I understand that, but like when it comes to technology, it's really a driving force. Mm -hmm. We're seeing regulation change. We're seeing a, a bit of a pull away from some of this. Like kind of what is the, Ericsson being a Swedish company and thinking like, you know, I'm not trying to get too political, but I just kind of wonder, how are you guys kind of thinking about bringing that back into the light? Because at Davos here, mm. it's been much less of a subject, but to your point, mm. planet's not changing. No, I, I think, you know, for us, it's being, running technology, it actually relies on global standardization. So we work with all our competitors to set the standard for the foundation yeah. of our technology, which I think is pretty unique. So we actually can provide a better consistent service around the world. Yeah. So that's, you know, at the heart of it, yeah. we're a global company. Absolutely. We're, Sweden as a home market is tiny. So for us, being present in the large markets that drive momentum, I mean, obviously US is a big home market for us. India yep. is also a growing market for us. And frankly, we, we have a mission where we really want to power uh, the network and the next wave of growth for yeah. industries uh, and, and the world. So I think for us, it's that's our mission. And then we have to adapt for how we need to operate. Yeah, and one of the really... And one of the really practical things I'll say is, is the edge provides a really big opportunity 
to be more thoughtful about yeah. where, you know, you and I did a panel together, yeah. where computation takes place. Something else uh, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about is, is Erickson's story. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I have had the chance a little bit on the, on the sidelines, but not necessarily on the record, to talk about kind of a company in transition. Yeah. Still a prominent brand, known around the world, clearly driving the, 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 you know, the telco, the mobile, the network industry. But also much bigger than that. I mean, when you think of this stuff, it all connects to data centers. It all provides an, an avenue to running LLMs. It, yeah. You know, how are you sort of describing it for those that maybe didn't come up in, in the first large wave of Ericsson's growth and are now seeing this new sort of version of Ericsson? And by the way, a lot of great history, a lot of great pedigree. I'm not saying it's no. not, but I'm kind of, you know, I want to hear more about how it's evolving. Where we're pushing now is really how we can drive limitless connectivity to improve people's lives, redefine businesses and pioneer sustainable future. And at the heart of it, a really programmable open network where you can start access the resources like a network API, mm -hmm. just as we've been doing with a lot of other capabilities in the software stack. But the, many of these capabilities are built down deep in a core network. Yep. So here we've done uh, an amazing job, I would say, over the last couple of years to make sure we can actually start build network capabilities that are accessible and as open so developers can access it in a different way than before. The other part is, of course, we see we play an important role in driving energy efficiency. So how do we continue while we bring more capacity, lower latency, better capabilities, with, uh, and, and we actually have increased the scaling of our services. How do we do that while becoming 10x for every jump more energy efficient so we don't consume more energy just because we use it more? And I think that's a question that is not only important for us, but also as we scale gen AI applications, right? And there, I think AI, but also using the right type of connectivity or process the data where it's really needed or more yep. relevant will be an important topic as we continue yep. to scale automation AI at the edge and as at the core. Absolutely. So maybe we can finish up here. Um, you and I sat on a panel together uh, mm -hmm. in the bubble, the dome yeah. with MIT, Forbes, and you know the topic was connectivity at the edge. I'd love to get your take on that particular conversation, that opportunity. We know a lot of what you just said about kind of where computation takes place, but what is the sort of perspective that you and Ericsson have on connectivity at the edge and what do you see happening in the next few years? Look, we, we think, we always thought connectivity and distributed connectivity is critical, right? Yeah. I think what is interesting now, many best effort application and you know where it's not critical to get the data back, if you send a message for instance, yep. maybe it's okay that it's get processed a minute later or whenever it's available. I think where we're quite excited is the art of possible when you can start to manage voice and video, not only data, but exchange at the edge. So think about many of these um, Gen AI solution right now. We had this company Voice Brain, right? Yeah. That are actually powering, empowering uh, the staff at the front at airports to get yeah. real time information just by analyzing and assessing unstructured voice yeah. data real time. Yeah. There are a lot of interesting applications. So we see that in uh, law enforcement, fire responders, but also, frankly, in inventory in hospitals, where you now actually start to see the commercialization yeah of video analytics powered by our connectivity. And I think it's quite, it, we, you will not need cellular connectivity everywhere, but you actually now have the possibility to do that at that much competitive cost yep. with the delivery and quality that you need at edge to start actually scaling. A lot of exciting applications that bring better safety, improved health, but also improve productivity and energy efficiency. I think that's that's exciting, but I think also back to the question or comment, conversation we had in IoT, yeah. we've been talking about it, I said 20 years, probably 40 years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now we start to see some of the real value that we've been talking about actually being enabled. Absolutely. Hey, Lisa, I want to thank you so much. It was great spending time with you here in Davos. Uh, we're right, the Magic Mountain is right here behind us, or is it that one? I don't know which one it is, but it's always yeah. so wonderful to spend time with you. Congratulations on the success so far, and look forward to doing many more things together and having you back on the show with me. So I'm have a great rest of your Davos. Thank, and thank you, you everybody for joining this little walk and talk. I'm the six, I'm Daniel Newman, this is the 6.5. We are on the road, or we are on the street here in Davos. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you all later.